Hey, Perry. Hey, Tallinn. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Awesome. So? Uh, what did you want to talk about? I was going to ask you the same question. Didn't you start this meeting? But me? No, you sent me a link. That's weird, because I got a link from you. I, I thought it was from you. Let me see. Well, if I didn't start this meeting, and you didn't start this meeting, then who did? Oh, you know, okay, there's actually another person in the meeting. Uh, where? Yeah, it says, uh, it's G-Host. A G-Host? This isn't a G-Chat, though. Well, if it doesn't say G-Host, then it, it's set. <gasps> the, okay, that says Ghost. Yeah, um, that, okay, um... You know what? I gotta go. Yeah, me too. I, uh, I'm we'll talk later. This I'll see you soon. This is bad timing. I gotta uh, do some grocery uh, shopping. Yep, so. bye. Yep, bye. Bye. Yep, bye. bye. <laughs> I love Halloween. From the Storybook Theater at NWCT, it's the How Do You Do Show with Tal and Bigelow. Today's guest, Ben Dunphy Hall. Jane Crane Simpson. I'm Perry Winkle. Now here's your host, Tallinn Bigelow. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of How Do You Do? I'm your host, Tallinn Bigelow, and I am very excited. Why? Because it's Halloween on Saturday. This is a costume. This isn't just a suit that I own. I wish. I mean, I'd wear this as a... You could wear this any day. It's one of those kinds of costumes. You could wear it to the bank. You could wear it at a party. But, uh, yeah, you know, more than Halloween costumes, more than candy, more than movies even, the thing I'm most excited about is music. There are so many great Halloween songs. All-time favorite, The Monster Mash. The Monster what? What? Uh... Well, Perry Winkle, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Perry, you haven't heard of the Monster Mash? I am not familiar with any such song. I mean, it's just surprising. I feel like it, it's something that definitely gets played every year, and I'm just surprised you haven't heard it. I mean, what's it about? What's it about? Uh, well, it is from the point of view of a scientist singing the song. Kind of has like a funny voice. Okay, scientist, yeah. He was working in the lab late one night when his eyes beheld an eerie sight wow. for his creature from the slab. Right, slab, got it. Began to rise, and suddenly... Uh, well, what happened? To his surprise, he did the mash. And just to clarify, he did the monster mash? Yep, he did the mash. Got it. And how was it received? Well, actually, it was a graveyard smash. Okay. Well, what happened next? Well, you best believe it caught on in a flash. Hmm, wow, so he did the mash. Ah? Uh, oh, he did the monster mash. There you go, he nailed it. Okay, well, now that I know what it's about, yeah. how does it go? I will, uh, I'll show it to you at the break. Okay, sounds good. The other thing I always get excited for around this time, scary stories. And you know what? What? You got me pretty good earlier, I'll admit it. I did. So I think it's time that I return the favor. Darling, I don't know if we have time for a whole scary story right now. Don't worry, Perry, this is gonna be quick. It's time for some two-sentence scary stories. What? Whoa, that's dark. Okay, one sec, where's that? These stories, which I am about to read, have been written by our writing staff, and they are very short. Look, I gotta say, I don't scare that easy. I'm, I'm a literal monster. Let's begin. She was so excited to sleep in, until she realized it was a Friday. <laughs> oh, I, I, I guess that's um bad timing. Okay, well he, here's another. He was happy he got his feelings off his chest, but he sent the email not to his friend, but his math teacher. What's, uh, what's scary about that one? Well, because the, uh, the math teacher's gonna think that the student has a, has a crush on them, probably. Oh, ah! 
Is that what you want? Yeah, I got another, I got another. Timmy finally finished his school project after working all night. But when Timmy woke up, he realized he forgot to hit submit. This is you trying to scare me? When Sally put her cake in the oven, she saw the unopened bag of sugar still on the shelf. Now, sounds like it'll be a gross cake. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, just a, probably going to be a, a bad cake. That's it? This is the scariest one of all. This is the scariest one. This is going to do it. Okay. This is going to scare you. I'm ready. Okay, uh, you've been warned. Okay, I've been warned. Okay. Okay. She sat down, ate her breakfast, and went to work. Then, she woke up! Ah! Okay, okay. You know what? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll turn the lights back on. That was rough. All right, well, I tried, Perry. I, I honestly tried, and, uh, you know, I thought that'd scare you more. Well, I just don't scare that easily, I guess. This doesn't mean I'm done yet. Because I know that Periwinkle here is a great comedy lover. And anyone who loves comedy, there's one thing that scares them. More than anything. It's a bad joke. <gasps> uh, now you wouldn't. And I did ask our writing team to come up with a couple jokes that were so bad that they're scary. I'm sorry. I, I, I went too far. I'm sorry. Hey, uh, hey, Periwinkle. Oh, uh, what? Hi. Yes. What do pandas get for Halloween? Uh, I don't know what. Bamboo! No, no! Uh, uh, it's, it's too much. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... Hey, yo, what kind of security does a pumpkin patch have? What kind of... What? I don't know. I don't know. Security what? gourds. Uh, come on. Okay, I'm, I, I take it back. I'm scared. What do you call a skeleton that cleans? No, what? A Grim Sweeper! Ah, okay. I'm scared. You win. You got me. All right. I'll stop. Are we even? Yes, yes, even. We are even. All right. We'll be right back with more How Do You Do. If you still need costume inspiration, you might be able to learn something from our first guest. He is a former member of Studio Northwest here at Northwest Children's Theater, and you may have seen him recently in the ensemble of Susicle. Please welcome Ben Dunphy Hall. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Happy early Halloween. I understand that you are able to show us how to make some pretty cool armor, and I, I really can't wait to see what this looks like. Can I ask how this started? I've always been pretty big on fantasy since I was a kid. You know, I liked Lord of the Rings a bit more than Star Wars and all that. And I was a, a big fan of World of Warcraft. And when I was on YouTube, I found this really awesome artist. She just made these amazing pieces of armor. Lights, smoke, fog, just gigantic. They looked real, but still super cool and mythical. And I just like knew that I had to try and recreate that. Awesome, yeah. I feel like, um, you know, I'm, I've am i described myself as a nerd for sure, but I didn't like go to my first Comic-Con until about, I guess, two years ago now. Seeing some of the, the artistry that goes in like really cool home custom made like costumes and cosplay, pretty neat. What kind of pieces have you made in the past then? Well, I've made one full set of armor and then a couple of side projects and you know I mainly when I talk about making armor I talk about the the full set I've made. I mean the full suit seems like quite an accomplishment. Absolutely I mean it took a it took a lot of time it took maybe one and a half months to complete wow, start okay. to finish so it was a long process. Okay uh well, I don't know that we have a month and a half, but um, I'm really curious about what the process is like. Where do you even start? I wouldn't know where to begin. I'll confess, when I went to Comic-Con, you know, I, I bought a costume from someone who knows what they're doing. I am not the person who made it. So uh, where do you even start with this? Uh, I mean, the concept, really, you know, I, I spent a good week 
thinking of what I wanted to do, what I wanted the color palette to be, you know, how I, what I wanted the theme to kind of feel like. Um, and then after that, I guess you start with the template and that can, you know, templates, it really varies on the piece of armor that you're making. Like, let's say a, a leg, like a thigh piece, mm -hmm. super easy. You can knock that out. Really? Okay. Minute. But like a shoulder, that, that took me a long time. I'd say that took me half a day to fully get the templates for. It was a lot of trial and error. Okay. Um, and then after you do templates, you, you purchase the foam and then you make the cuts. You take a heat gun and you warm up the foam so that it bends easily and you can, you know, kind of shape it and carve it to the shape you want. And after you've shaped all of it, you can start gluing stuff and then mm -hmm. you paint and then you add some type of gloss on top. I use Mod Podge. That works really well for me. Some people use shoe shiner. People get really creative. Okay. Uh, and then finishing touches. Awesome. So yeah, I feel like there's so much of the process that's like making a thing that is light and wearable look like something that is very heavy and, and sturdy. Uh, I, I don't know how well your armor would actually protect you in battle, but I bet it looks pretty menacing. Uh, yeah. Do you have any stuff you can show us? Like anything we can look at? Absolutely. So this is from the, the set I made. This is a shoulder pad. It's like this. Uh, that's that looks super impressive honestly that uh what is that even so <laughs> that's just foam and like what else is going on but it looks yeah. it's um i mean here's the back side it's just it's just foam and um some velcro and glue and paint really i spray painted the, awesome. uh, the the chain stuff that's really cool that looks so great yeah do you have any any advice for anybody who might want to start creating their own materials. I mean, use the internet. It is your best friend. I'd say start off on the slower side. You know, I think I went in pretty quickly with, with crazy, unforgiving, thick slices of foam. And I think you can start on the smaller side. I mean, you could even start with cardboard. If you want to just try it out, you don't want to dip into it too quickly. Just like try and make some stuff out of a cardboard or um, craft foam you can find at the like Dollar Tree. Yeah, that seems like a great place to start. That seems like someone like me would probably prefer to start so I don't just totally do something wrong. I mean, I'm sure you must have made a lot of mistakes as well. And um, I'm sure when you're cutting something, you can't make it bigger when you cut too short, right? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, cool. I mean, do you have anything else you'd want to show us or anything else you want to talk about process wise? I, I think that's it. Ben, thank you so much for showing that off. And next time you make something, if you record a video of it, I'm sure we can put it on the show later. Thanks so much for being here. Ben Dunphy Hall, everybody. We'll be right back with more How Do You Do. Halloween is fast approaching, and just afterwards is Dia de los Muertos. Here to tell us a little bit more about it is an NWCT intern, a member of the Beat Improv team, and a member of our main stage company. Please welcome Jane Crane Simpson. Hey, Jane, how are you doing? I'm good. How about you, Talon? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Thank you for asking. So, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more. I understand you have some experience with Dia de los Muertos. Who introduced you to the holiday? So I actually learned about the holiday in some of my first Spanish classes that I took in middle school. And upon further research, I learned that some of my Mexican family celebrates it. Awesome, who in your family? Uh, so my abuela celebrates it and a lot of other of my dad's family because they are Mexican. And so I was able to find some roots in that and I thought it was really nice. Would you mind telling us just a little bit about it? How do you celebrate it? Yeah, so it's a uh, celebration of the time in which those who have died can come and visit us in the living world. You can celebrate it by building ofrendas with food and pictures and lots and lots of candles. In a lot of parts of southern Mexico, there are huge parades with big flowers and decorated skeletons and costumes and floats and everything so yeah and ofrenda that's is that basically like an altar or is it 
Yes, so it is an altar. It kind of sounds like offering uh, in English, which is a really good way to think of it. It's basically a little memorial or altar that you build to the person who you wish to celebrate with, who is deceased, um, so that they can find their way back to you and celebrate with you for the 24 or 48 hours that you celebrate. Yeah, you said 48 hours. So I, I understand that it is kind of a multi-day celebration. Uh, is it always on yes. the same day or does it always start yes. the same day? So it's from midnight on October 31st to midnight on, on November 2nd. Uh, and it's either 24 hours or 48 hours, depending on if you celebrate um, El Dia de los Inocentes, which mm. is the day of the children. So I see. if you celebrate children coming back to you, you would start on uh, midnight of October 31st. And if you do not, that like myself, then you start on November 1st, midnight. What uh, I've always kind of enjoyed about Dia de los Muertos is it, it seems like it's a it's something that could be very somber but it seems like a very joyful occasion and correct me if I'm wrong but no you're absolutely right um it is a it's a celebration it's a holiday it's a festive occasion it's really colorful and one of the main decorations is Mexican marigolds which is another little piece of life that you bring into it and people bake food for days and it's it really is a celebration which I think is a lot of what Mexican um, culture around death is is celebration of life but the core of the holiday is the dead coming to spend time with us and to visit us it's about remembering them and feeling their presence with you it's a very spiritual thing are there I'm sure there are, but like common misconceptions about the holiday that you feel like you could speak to. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people think of it as strongly relating to Halloween, but it's very much a different thing, for example. Yeah, so it's actually closer to All Saints or All Souls Day. It started as an Aztec holiday, and then as Spanish Catholicism came in, it kind of merged with that. And that is why it's on October 31st in the beginning of November. Um, instead of in the summer, as the Aztecs originally celebrated it. But I think the most common misconception is that it is a subset of Halloween, which it definitely is not, or that it is a somber holiday, which it definitely is not, because it is celebrating the dead, um, or that all of Mexico celebrates it as strongly. It really is a Southern Mexico thing to celebrate it as such a production, and with big parades, and... Um, you know, sugar skulls and all that stuff. Um, whereas when you get more north, it starts to be a little bit less huge. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, talking about the, like the parades more, and I've seen a lot of really cool imagery and photos from and videos from uh, the parades are happening. We're talking about like these massive like puppets. I mean, the imagery is is just very cool. It is absolutely amazing. And you can find pictures and videos everywhere and it is truly a gore. I honestly would say it is the most beautiful holiday that I've ever seen. It is absolutely spectacular. We don't really have so much of a, like an American equivalent to it, you know? It's just kind of maybe some families have their own sort of celebrations of life in their own way but it's not really such a big traditional year. Yeah, thing. we really don't, especially because death is looked on as such a morose and somber thing, which it is, but it's purely that within American culture. And so I think that this brings a whole other idea and light to it that I think people can really benefit from. Yeah, I mean, I think there's also other cultures that don't view death so much as a as a negative thing. Exactly, a transition yeah. Or, are there other, I guess, traditions that we haven't talked about? I mean, I know we mentioned sugar skulls, which is something people know about, but maybe don't re recognize the deeper meaning of it. So food is a really big one. Again, in Mexican culture, food is absolutely huge. Pan de muerto is a sweet bread made with anise and orange juice. It's absolutely delicious. Sugar skulls are typically something you don't eat, but they are a good decoration, um, which come from Lady of the Dead, which is an old portrait or print, I believe. Oh, that's super cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm sure he got it from somewhere, but that is generally where we get the idea. I love that this is a holiday that feels like it came more from a communal understanding that this yes. is how this community wants to think of death and how we want to honor our loved ones that pass on. Um, I love that. Who are you celebrating this year? I celebrate my father. 
he uh, died a little while ago. And I like this holiday because I get to pull him in and to have him be with me um, and celebrate with him. Um, yeah, I think I noticed the phrasing of your question because you asked who I celebrate it for. It's not a wrong question. I just noticed that I would never have thought of it that way because it is something that you celebrate with the people that you bring back for you um, as much as with any of the living people that you celebrate with. And yes. I love that. I feel like that's such a, a lovely, I don't know, central thought of all of this. I'm so happy that we get to share a little bit more about Me it with too. people who might not know it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, bringing your personal experience to this. Thank you so see much you. for your time. I'll see you soon. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll see you soon, Dallin. That's our show. I want to thank Ben Dunphy Hall, Jane Crane Simpson, and everyone who sent in photos and videos of their own celebrations. If you want to send us something or you want to figure out how to be on this show, go ahead and check our Facebook page to see what we're looking for, or you can drop us a line at info at nwcts.org. Happy Halloween, Feliz Dia de los Muertos, and thanks for watching.